one thirty in the morning and my outside cat uh, here's my inside cat, Kato. <laughs> I was sitting here and there's my crate of cleaning products and I saw that little pink ball sneak out from behind it and there he came sneaking because I threw a toy for him and he's he likes to play. Now I'm doing spring cleaning this week and the floors always come last because my dooryard is covered in sand and it's mud season. I'm lucky I don't live where there's real mud. I live on a paved road, and uh, there's Miss Money Penny. What is it? You good kitty. So I was gonna talk about things. It's spring is coming, so that means bugs. And I'm all for Mother Nature, but not too much inside my house. I don't mind occasional spider. They don't bother me. There's no poisonous spiders in Maine. So if one crawls across the floor, I'm not gonna immediately kill it. You know, I'm not heartless. <laughs> and some people are like, burn it with fire. But spiders kill bugs, and if, unless it's, you know, an infestation, I'm not going to bother one spider in my house. No big deal. And, uh, but ants I don't like. Once in a while, we get those sugar ants, and I've gotten them at other places. And what I found was, um, you can do all the traps, and you can do all, everything. This is, um, boric acid, and it's sold at Walmart for, like, I don't know, less than five bucks, I think. But it's basically it's boric acid and you got to be careful around pets and children with it but it's got the little pointy thing so and we used to use this in chicago area to, to uh, deter cockroaches because the, the apartment complexes would you know make you empty your cabinets and cover things with plastic and come in and spray once or twice a year you know the places i lived were in the suburbs so they weren't that bad with infestations there and so it's but we still use boric acid in the kitchen area along the baseboards to deter any stragglers, you know. And, uh, but with ants, I found, I got this micro band, and I'm all for cleaning and germs and stuff, you know, getting rid of germs. But I don't go to town too much because I don't have little kids coming, bringing home stuff from school. Forget about COVID. Before COVID, you know, kids would bring stuff home. And so you'd have to wipe down the doorknobs and everything. But it's just me here. And I wash my hands a lot. So, <sighs> you know, I've been through, going through some catharsis and stuff and cabin fever. And I'm getting over it. I'm getting out today to get my checkup. So my first intake at this new place that's close by. And I'm hopeful because they have four facilities and they seem on the ball more than the other one I was going to. And, uh... But I use a barrier method, which is just a simple, cheap uh, rope cock. And you just buy this and you keep it, keep the box closed up so it won't dry out too much. And you have to use it in the warmer months because in the winter it gets too brittle. But you just kind of massage it a little bit as you would sort of like any gummy substance. And if you have a screen that might have a gap where the ants are getting in, you just, like in, in Waterville, I did have a screen. I was on the second floor and I had a transom over my kitchen, transom window over my kitchen sink. And whenever I opened it and this, the, the ants would come around, I'd try the borax and i try all that and I'm like, why don't I just block them out, you know? And I got this stuff and shoved it all around the edge of the screen. And I have it on my screens, on my slider windows by the picture window that overlooks the lake. Cause I ordered custom screens from a place in Texas. Um, cause it, this, they don't make that size anymore. And the places here want an astronomical amount. And they did it for something like 40 bucks a screen plus shipping in a, like a wooden, a box with a wooden frame so they wouldn't bust. And I just popped them in, but there was a tiny, tiny gap. You know, I measured a hundred million times. There were those spring loaded ones and I popped them in, but Still, these itty bitty midges would get in and cloud around my ceiling at night over the lamps, and I'm like, nah. That's why I bought the screens. I get the I keep the flies out, but those too. So I I got this rope cock and I put it all around the edges, and it keeps the screen from rattling and and you know you and it's removable. You can pull it off if you need to pop the screen out, and it's cheap. You get a huge roll for almost nothing. So if you have places that you want. And say you're renting like me, you don't want to do permanent repairs or whatever. 
just get some rope cock and put it around, you know, little spots because it can be manipulated like Play-Doh. And don't let kids play with it. Get on their clothes because they'll probably wreck them. <laughs> Do it when they're sleeping or something, you know. But if you want to... And, and this stuff is good too. You got to keep it away from pets. But I put it down in behind the um, the trim because the trim is very rustic here. So it's not tight against the wall. So that could be another reason I, I might get. And I'll see the occasional carpenter ant, you know, the big ones. And those I'll get. But I don't have, it's the sugar ants that bother me, the little tiny ones. And they just have to be told, don't come around here. And they get in my mailbox too. And when they get in your mailbox, leave the mailbox door open because they're just trying to get away from water and they're climbing up a mailbox post and finding this nice, cozy, dark place to start making a nest. So last year I kept opening my mailbox after it rained and there was ants everywhere. I'm like, what the heck, man? I'd never heard of it, but you just leave it open. And by an hour or two later, well, and they'll be gone because they don't want to be in the open. Ants want to be in a little nest underground or, or in a tree or wherever they go, usually underground. And uh, they're just trying to get away from the water. And the same thing with earwigs and stuff. If you see a bunch of them, they're trying to get away from being drowned, the same as anybody else would, you know? So you just want to keep them out however you want to deter them with something like this or boric acid. And, um, you know, put some weather stripping around. This, this cock stuff works fine and make sure things are sealed up. And against mice, I use steel wool around the kitchen pipes. And I just, I just took a chopstick and took some steel wool and put it around the holes of the kitchen pipes because this is a rustic summer cabin that's been converted. And so the basement is open to the elements, even though being wrapped in plastic, it's got wooden boat doors. So it's not a sealed basement. It's just, you know, I've got a cement pad for the, the appliances, like the water heater and stuff, but it's dirt. And they've had to divert water away with using a series of tubes. <laughs> um, and there's still water that comes down through, but that water also feeds my spring fed well, which is just amazing, amazing water we've got here. I'm so lucky. Um, because when we first moved here, there was a drought, a drought, drought, all those words that you read all the time. And then when you say them out loud, you're like, well, how do I say that word? <laughs> drought. Anyway, people's wells were drying up around here and ours never did. And it's because we're on a hillside and it's a spring fed deep well. And, uh, the, the fellow that built it did a good job because the water is clean and clear and there are places in Maine where you can go and there's a spring running freely it's a public spot but they're kind of hidden you have to look them up and you can go there with your jugs of water and fill up on clean spring water for free forget about buying water at the store I mean you can do it for free if you really want to go that way and my oldest cousin remembers that she lives in the midwest now but I talked to her about it when she goes, oh yeah, we used to go to a spring at so-and-so. And she's got a lot of stories and I need to be talking to her more and collect the stories before, you know, God forbid anything would happen. She's not that old, but you should listen to your elders and, and your family members and collect their stories, write them down or record them however best you can because <clears throat> once they're gone, a big piece of your family history is gone. And you just don't want to lose that, you know. If you don't care about it, maybe somebody else down the line will. But, you know, people need to uh, listen to their elders and, and respect them. And just, you know, listen to their stories because they have a lot to teach us. Anyway, this cat's here he goes again with the ball. Uh, I'll get these floors clean. The floors get clean last in spring cleaning. Remember that. Because all the dust falls down and the dirt falls down. Then you clean the floors at the end. Anyway, good luck against the spring invasions. <laughs> I, mean, I know everybody in the spring is like, how do I keep the ants out? Blah, blah, blah. This is my method. If you have a better one, let me know.